So how many of you have been in church and you get to the end altar call where the pastor gives a rather simplistic explanation of salvation, telling all in the pews, if you just say this simple prayer and ask Jesus to forgive you and ask him into your heart, you will inherit the kingdom of God today. Oh, I see that hand. I see that hand. I see that hand. Oh, and I see that hand too. Well done. So my challenge to you today is, are they really saved? I'll not just say possibly not, but I will add, it's possible that this sinner's prayer is sending more people to hell than you know. Now, I know this may come as a huge shock for a few of you watching, and I know several of you watching are likely to be those people, one of those people who raised your hand in a church service. But I want to unpack this thoroughly so you understand clearly what the Bible says about this, because I think this is one thing that we really need to get right. So going to the source of Jesus himself, speaking with Nicodemus, he said in John 3.3, 3, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So this is an absolute. You must be born again. So it begs the question then, what does being born again mean? And we see this in the passage shortly after where Jesus said in verse 3, 6, that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. What Jesus was saying is that this flesh or this body that we live in, it's cursed. It's going to eventually die. But it is your spirit which must be born again. And then, of course, we later hear the, the famous John 3.16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. We all know this one. And I encourage all of you to read John 3 as it's such an amazing piece of scripture. But even Paul clarifies that being renewed in the spirit uh, through Romans 8, 9, he says, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God actually dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. So what does it mean then to be born anew in the spirit? And how do we actually know? Well, first and foremost, let's understand that God judges the heart. Jeremiah 17, 10 says, I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind to renew each person according to their conduct, according to what their deeds deserve. Your heart dictates your choices and your actions and the things that actually come out of your mouth. And so being born anew is to be given a new heart by inviting the Holy Spirit within. Ezekiel 36, 2, it says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. You can't do it on your own. You have to allow God to be the one to do it. And I have to say from firsthand experience, folks, that this is not just a one-time thing where you say some words and you go back to living in the world. Paraphrasing Romans 6, Paul actually states, Shall we continue in sin that grace may increase? Certainly not. And so this is a daily struggle and a daily renewing of the mind. And it will be easier in some areas than others for people because we all have our own individual hangups because this body that we occupy, it's sinful. However, Philippians 4.13, it actually says, I can do all this through him who gives me strength. But another consideration to understand is that if you are truly born again, you'll desire to change and want to be Christ-like and to seek the truth of God. And look, let me encourage you. God promises in Jeremiah 29, 13, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. God doesn't want to be hidden, but he also makes it clear that he wants you to want to know him. When you meet someone for the first time, look, how much do you know about them? 
So why would you think about knowing uh, about God and knowing God? Why do you think that would be any different? I mean, look, sometimes you meet people and it's a slow burn getting to know them. And with others, it's exciting and interesting. Again, look, this is no different. It takes time and effort. And look, in many cases, it takes patience. And so this is why I always point out things like not taking my word about scripture, but rather, rather you go and discover and read it for yourself. It comes into you that way. Look, I'm just here to point to God and say, look, isn't this cool? Okay, so maybe you've said some words asking for forgiveness and you started going to church every weekend, said a prayer or two here and there. Look, you might have even gone so far as to crack open your Bible and good for you if you did that. Look, all of these things, they're, they're good things, but it is also meaningless without obedience and repentance. Now, I'm sure you've heard of this word, but what does it mean? What does repentance mean? Repentance is an honest, regretful acknowledgement of sin with commitment to change. And repentance leads us to cultivate godliness while eradicating habits that lead into sin. And I'm going to go a little old school so you know, so you can see just how God looks at repentance, citing 2 Chronicles 7, 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and here's the most important part, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. You see, this is conditional. You pray, seeking God, and turning from sin, which is repenting. And if you do this, then God will forgive. There's no room here for some half-hearted words in the air. And while you are not saved by actions or works, as Ephesians 2 says, the desire and action of not sinning is the outward expression of true repentance. Now, one last thing I want to point out is the quality of your church and how we're meant to grow. And I know there will be some of you out there that you're going to get angry with me or at least very defensive of the church that you're attending. But before I go to this soft spot, please understand what I'm about to say comes from almost two decades of seeking truth amongst the evangelical minefield that's out there. The church is an imperfect group of true believers, honest, God-fearing lovers of Jesus, con artists, money-hungry swindlers, false doctrine pushers, narcissistic platform posers, and all the evil kind of people this world contains. Look, sin is abundant everywhere. However, in the midst of all of this sin and imperfection, God still navigates through it, giving everyone the opportunity to be redeemed. And the truth is, look, I'm a living example of this. My first real church that I started attending could be considered not terribly full of scripture like I present here. And yet, God used it to get me back to him. And I know with where I was at at the time, had I heard a very convicting message such as this, I would have run right out the door. So I am so grateful with the grace and gentleness with how God has directed me over the years. But we are meant to grow and to seek God constantly and allow the Holy Spirit to renew our heart and mind daily. Look, three songs in a sermon can be great, but if all you ever did was stick your hand up once, say some words to the air, and kept on sinning in the world, I doubt God would consider you a Christian. 1 John 3, 9 says, Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for he, for his seed remains or abides in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. Now, that doesn't mean you won't completely stop sinning while within this imperfect body but it's more your realization that your sin and a holy God cannot be together. And so this is why I am highly critical of any church that asks to see that hand and leaves you hanging in the wind. 
because raising a hand and muttering under your breath isn't repenting and turning away from sin. And that is doing all those people a dangerous disservice because people will keep coming back to that church because the music is good and the lights are dazzling and the message is encouraging and probably not convicting. And they'll walk away out of there thinking, I'm good, God loves me. But the truth is, the building they just walked out of, that's a club. Folks, that's my word today, and perhaps a hard word for some of you. Look, and it's funny as I have lost a few subscribers on this channel along the way with these hard messages. But look, honestly, folks, I'm not here for the popularity vote. I'm just going to keep trying my best to present biblical truth against the news and happenings of this world with the hope that someone out there is listening and chooses to embrace Christ and not let go. Look, I do read all your comments and try and comment back when appropriate. And look, for this particular video, please pass this on to your friends riding the fence or even those with, with no understanding of the Bible. So few people have a clear understanding of what the Bible and church is all about. And not that I have it all together, but speaking from a personal experience, look, I wish I knew all of this stuff sooner as it would have saved a tremendous amount of heartache. Folks, that's it, people, and I really hope to see you guys next time.